So in front of me here, I have one of the most beloved pocket knives possibly ever made. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people out there that really love the Buck 110. And to be honest, I'm partial to the Buck 112. I think it's a more reasonably sized knife for like everyday stuff. Um, that being said, when I saw the Tomoki Mountain Knife Works was offering this knife right here in front of me for $50. I had to pick one up because that's about the same price as a regular 110, and this one is an upgrade over the regular 110. Uh, now, I should have probably gotten out my regular 110, but I don't really know where it's at. I could have grabbed the 112, but that's not really the uh, comparison that I would want to make really because this is a bigger knife um so instead of doing either of those things i'm just going to talk about the knife in front of me here so this is a buck 110 offered by smoky mountain knife works in s30v with some special wooden handles on it um like i said the buck 110 is one of the most beloved pocket knives possibly ever made um and you know it's you know famous for its 420 hc uh, clip blade uh, but when you can get an upgrade for the same price, why not? So, like I said, S30V, which is a upgrade over 420HC. It does still have the boss heat treat on it, so I'm sure it's very well uh, treated as far as heat treat goes. Uh, Bucks 420HC is honestly a really good steal as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but S30V is a uh, nice upgrade. It's your buck, and it's got the little anvil symbol, USA, 110. These aren't stamped into the tang. Um, I don't know if that's something Smoky Mountain Knifeworks decided not to do because of the cost. Uh, but you can see there's the date code right next to 110. Uh, the blade is a little bit of a different shape over a typical 110 blade. This is where I wish I had my uh, regular 110, but I don't. Um, the edge on this is honestly a little bit rougher than typical uh, buck knives, but I think, if I had to guess, yeah. Still shaving sharp, the edge just feels a little bit more rough. Um, so yeah, Boss Heat Treat on S30V, what's not to love there? Um, honestly, I think I would really love to have a buck 110 in carbon steel, uh, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, this knife, when I got it, was super gritty, uh, so I've been running mineral oil through it and opening and closing it, and it's still not perfect, like it's a little lazy on close there, but it is a lockback, so it's certainly not going to snap closed like a lot of like slip joint knives do, but I remember my regular 110 snapping closed on my fingers one time and really hurting me, which makes me feel like this does not close as strong as it should. Um, but that being said, it's still probably a little bit gritty in there. Um, still getting gunk out of it. Yeah, there's still some gunk in there. You can see on the tang there. Still coming out of it. Um, but yeah, so S30V blade. You get these nice wooden handles. I'm not sure what kind of wood this is. Uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Forks may have announced it or even said in their post, but I was too busy being excited to read, so I just bought it. Um, so nice looking wood, not sure what kind of wood, but it does look really good. Uh, brass <laughs> bolsters and liners and everything. Uh, same chunk of brass that, you know, a normal Buck 110 is. Just some uh, more interesting looking wood and a blade steel upgrade. Um, the one thing that I will say about this knife is it does have the slightest amount of side to side play. Um, and I may try to fix that, or I may just leave it alone. I'm not sure yet. Uh, but, you know, with this being a lockback, I'm not all that concerned with it. It doesn't rock, which is cool. A lot of lockbacks will, uh, like, rock back and forth on the lock. This one does not. Um, I'm not a huge lockback person. I like my Buck 112. Um, and I think I'll probably end up carrying this just because you know, the S30V and everything. Um, another part of the uh, upgraded knife here is you get a little bit different sheath. The normal Buck 110 sheaths are black. This one's kind of more of like a brownish 
red maybe uh different sheath still made in mexico just like the black sheath the pocket loop still too low just like the regular just like the regular sheath it should be up higher so it rides uh lower on your belt um so it's less annoying um that's just how i feel about it uh but same construction i'm sure it's just fine just a different color leather and maybe a different quality leather. I'm not really sure there, but it does certainly look different um, than the black sheath. So I like that a little bit more of like a uh, brownish red, maybe a, uh, what do they call that? Oxblood type uh, sheath pretty much. Uh, so that's neat. If you care that much about the, the uh, belt sheath, which honestly, now that I'm bike riding a lot, um, I can see myself using belt, belt sheaths for these knives more often. So I may do that. I may use that sheath for this knife when I carry it. Um, but super good looking knife. I kind of like the change they made with the blade, although I really do like the um, really pronounced blade shape on the Buck 110. This one's a little bit different, and I like the way I do like the way it looks. Um, I definitely appreciate the blade steel upgrade. I like the handles. Um, there was one other thing that I noticed with it, and that was that the blade grinds on the blade, I don't think, are quite even. I mean, now they look even. No, they're a little bit a little bit not even. If you look on this side here, the grind's a little bit less than on this side. So I did notice something there. Not the end of the world for me, but some people get really bent out of shape about stuff like that. Um, I'll just not worry about it and just use the knife not concerned about a blade edge is it geometry not so much geometry i'm not concerned about it being ground perfectly even i guess um because it'll cut just fine and you know over time as you sharpen it it won't matter anyway um but yeah so this is the buck 110 that smoky mountain knife works was was offering I believe they're all sold out and not going to do any more. So if you caught one, uh, awesome. If you didn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, definitely worth the money uh, at the time. Like I said, they were offering it for $50. I'm assuming they're not doing another one of these because I think they even said they're not going to. But uh, definitely a cool upgrade for the Buck 110. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one, and I hope you have a good day.